The idea of space mega structures has always fascinated the sci-fi fanatics as well as the general public. From a Dyson sphere-like mega structure of Olaf Stapledon's novel Star Maker to the widely known Death Star from Star Wars, these space mega structures have never failed to amaze Earthlings. Now these mega structures aren't just baseless science fantasies, but are based on real scientific concepts that have the potential to become our reality in the future. We'll discuss some of our favorite space mega structures in this video, so brace yourself. The first mega structure we are going to talk about is the science community's favorite, Dyson Sphere. One of the biggest conundrum at our hands since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution has been the ever-growing demand for energy. According to a report by the United Nations, energy demand is increasing about twice as fast as overall energy use, and is likely to rise by more than 50% by 2040. Assuming our civilization's populace and industry grew at a modest 1% per year, Dyson's calculations suggested that our area and energy needs would grow exponentially, becoming a trillion times larger in just 3,000 years. If we could just find a tesseract floating in space, a source of unlimited energy, how easier things would have been? But the only floating energy sources in space that we can draw that gargantuan amount of energy from are stars. In 1960, Dyson, a theoretical and mathematical physicist, introduced the concept of Dyson Sphere. It is a hypothetical superstructure built near our parent stars, and it would capture the star's energy and divert it back to the beneficiary planet. A Dyson Sphere would consist of orbiting solar collectors in the space around the star of an advanced civilization. The goal would be to ensure that a significant fraction of the star's energy hits a receiving surface, where it could be used to the civilization's benefit. Such a megastructure would harvest so much energy that the inhabitants of the planet could manipulate all natural forces like weather, volcanic activities, and earthquakes, making themselves a type 2 Kardashev civilization. The most realistic and feasible variant of the Dyson Sphere is called the Dyson Swarm, which will contain a constellation of man-made satellites in orbit around a star. The basic dynamics of this orbital arrangement are similar to how the Earth and other planets revolve around the Sun, but at a much closer distance and with many more elements, conjuring up the image of a swarm of honeybees defending their hive. Each of these satellites would have solar panels to collect the sun's radiation and transmit this energy wirelessly back to Earth, where it would be intercepted and used. Originally, the idea of Dyson Sphere was meant to hunt advanced civilization in Milky Way outside of our solar system. Dyson proposed that technologies like Dyson Sphere are something that other advanced civilizations in our galaxy would inevitably use. Dyson said that searching for evidence of the existence of such structures might lead to the discovery of advanced civilizations elsewhere in the galaxy. Scientists in the 21st century are actually looking to spot such megastructures in other parts of our galaxy. Moving on to our next megastructure, a matryoshka brain. As much as Elon Musk warns us about the dangers of AI, and how AI could possibly lead to human extinction? Artificial intelligence is our future, experts say, and they are optimistic about it. Inspired by the idea of a Dyson Sphere, Robert Bradbury, an inventor, came up with an extension of that idea. What if a Dyson Sphere was turned into a supercomputer? The most powerful machine in the universe. And so came the idea of Matryoshka Brain. A Matryoshka Brain is basically a giant computer that uses the entire energy output of a star. A computer that has thought capacities limited by the physics of the universe and are essentially immortal. Imagine a star, like our sun, with a giant shell around it. This shell encompasses the star and captures a large percentage of its energy output and uses it for complex computational processes. Now these computational processes will generate heat energy, which can in principle be captured to perform more computation. 
This is done by a second shell which surrounds the first shell. The second shell is just like the first shell, but it gets its energy from the heat waste of the first shell instead of directly from the star. You can imagine a whole array of shells like this, each generating less heat than its predecessor. A matryoshka brain would be made of a material called computronium. It's a hypothetical material we have yet to invent. But the idea behind it is that every particle would be a tiny computer capable of passing computer codes to other particles. A matryoshka brain will use all the energy of a star and as a consequence all the energy available in its planetary system, making that particular civilization a type 2 civilization on Kardashev scale. So, how powerful will this supercomputer be? Well, our brains carry out about a billion calculations per second, but a matryoshka brain could carry out a number of calculations that dwarfs that by an unimaginable amount. Even billions of humans are right, alive right now would be of no match for such a godly intelligence. It would be capable of calculating and predicting every event from human interactions to cosmic occurrences. Its processing power would have no limits at all. The idea of the Matryoshka brain violates none of the currently known laws of physics, although the engineering details of building such a structure would be staggering. As such a project would require the disassembly of significant portions of the planetary system of the star for construction materials. And ladies and gentlemen, that'll be Matryoshka brain for you. Moving to the idea of a giant space habitat, Bishopring. The global population has grown from 1 billion in 1800 to 7.8 billion in 2020. It is expected to keep growing and estimates have put the total population at a whopping 11.2 billion by the end of the 21st century. This ever-growing trend of the human population is going to pose serious problems in the near future. In the past few decades, scientists have come up with the idea of colonization of outer space, with the hope that it could help the Earth by relieving population pressure and taking environment-harming industries off Earth. These space colonies would also ensure the survival of human civilization in times of biological catastrophe. No space habitat has been constructed yet, but many design concepts with varying degrees of realism have come from both engineers and from science fiction authors. One idea of a colony is the bishop ring. A bishop ring is a type of hypothetical rotating space habitat originally proposed in 1997 by Forrest Bishop of the Institute of Atomic Scale Engineering. The Bishop ring would spin to produce artificial gravity by way of centrifugal force. The model of the habitat proposed by Forrest Bishop was 1000 km in radius and about 500 km in width, comparable to the area of Argentina or India. This giant rotating orbital habitat is meant to be built of woven diamondoid or bucky fiber cable. The habitat could be built without a roof, but the atmosphere retained by artificial gravity and atmosphere retention walls approximately 200 km in height. A natural night and day cycle could be achieved by tilting its orbit. Illumination could be achieved using mirrors or an artificial sun at its center. Making it would require truly extreme engineering and utter mastery of the forces of nature. But what about the atmosphere? Air pressure, with the normal partial pressure of gases like oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide, is a basic requirement of any space habitat. How will we provide an artificial atmosphere for such a humongous space habitat? Scientists have proposed that the required oxygen could be obtained from mood rocks. Nitrogen is the most easily available from the Earth. Moreover, nitrogen in the form of ammonia might be obtainable from comets and moons of outer planets. This will be a cup of tea for an advanced civilization. Scientists speculate that any civilization will be able to make such a space habitat after 3000 years of entering the industrial space. The next megastructure we'll be talking about is something not so far from reality. A space elevator. 
Humans are exploring the outer space, launching tens of rockets into outer space every year, from around half a century now. But still, launching a rocket to outer space costs a lot of money. The result is that placing even a single kilogram into orbit costs in the region of tens of thousands of dollars. So there is considerable interest in finding cheaper ways into orbit. The idea of a stairway to heaven has been much popular in our mythologies be it Western or Asian. Konstantin Syolovsky, a Russian rocket scientist, proposed the concept of a tower reaching geosynchronous orbit, aka outer space. Since then, better and better designs for a space elevator have been proposed. A space elevator is basically a type of planet-to-space transportation system. The main component would be a cable, with one end attached to the surface near the equator, and the other end in space beyond a geostationary orbit at around 35 786 km of attitude. With the cable deployed, climbers could repeatedly climb the cable to space by mechanical means, releasing their cargo to orbit. Such a cable would have considerable mass, so to stop it from falling, it would have to be balanced at the other end by a similar orbiting mass. The entire elevator would then be supported by centrifugal forces. To construct a space elevator on Earth, the cable material would need to be both stronger and lighter than any known material. Sadly, no known material is strong enough to cope with these forces. Not spider silk, not Kevlar, not even the strongest modern carbon fiber polymers. Compared to rockets, space elevators would be far cheaper and faster way to get cargo as well as people to Earth. So a space elevator in reality would essentially be an economic game changer for the space industry. The craziest part about all of this is that Obayashi Corporation, a Japanese-based company, is planning to build a space elevator by 2050. Yes, 30 years from now. Obayashi Corporation expects it to take 20 years to construct the cable from a 400 meter base that floats in water. True. Well, we at Dynamic Science have our fingers crossed until then. So far, we have covered the Dyson Sphere, the Matryoshka Brain, the Bishop Ring, and the Space Elevator. All of them, except the Space Elevator, would require a gargantuan amount of raw materials. These gargantuan space megastructures would be even larger than planet Earth itself. So how would any advanced civilization procure such a large amount of raw materials and from where? The answer is extraterrestrial bodies of our solar system, like Mars, Moon, and asteroid belts. Scientists around the globe are already using astronomical instruments and telescopes to identify such structures in our Milky Way. This is one of the many ways we humans hunt for advanced civilizations outside our solar system. As of now, these megastructures sound like total science fiction stuff, so we'd like to end our video with the words of Isaac Asimov, today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for your weekly dose of science.